Hello and welcome to my analysis of a chess game that I played back in October 2023 in uh, the club championship of the chess club that I play for. Our opponent is rated 1523 as you can see and we have the white pieces and this video is going to be kind of going over some of the important things to bear in mind when you're playing against someone who's lower rated than you because what can happen is that your opponent because they know they're lower rated don't really attack you or give you anything obvious to exploit and as the higher rated a player obviously you need to like really get at your opponent and put them under pressure and actually show why you're the higher rated player right so i feel like i do that quite well in this game so we open with e4 my opponent plays c5 which is already um quite confrontational especially considering the rating difference but i think it's a good strategy for lower rated players personally i know when i've played against higher rated players my typical strategy is to really get at them and because otherwise they're going to slowly outplay me right so i play a closed sicilian just trying to get my opponent out of theory because if i can get a position that both of us aren't really familiar with then it takes away any opening prep that he may have and puts us on a level playing field where i can make use of my higher rating so knight c6, bishop b5, I'm looking to potentially take, double up the pawns, do bishop for knight and just create some imbalance in the position um, because obviously I want to win. My opponent plays d6, f4, just taking space, getting ready for some aggressive pushes later on. Knight f6, computer doesn't like it, but in, during the game I didn't really like it either. Um, I was expecting something like a6, but, you know, it's a minor inaccuracy. d3, e6, looking at potential d5s in the future. Knight f3, bishop d7, and here I go a4. And I really liked this move because I'm expecting a6. And so I can take, and then b5 is no longer uh, as good because I'm covering the square. Also, if a6 is played and I retreat the bishop to c4, b5 isn't playable because my pawn's there already. So whilst it looks like it's trapping my bishop and getting rid of an escape square, it's actually freeing up an escape square because b5 can't be played with the same venom. So I was very happy with that move. Bishop e7, castle, castle, king h1, just getting off the diagonal. And then a6, so we go with the plan of bishop c4, because I no longer want to take, because he can take with the bishop, the bishop gets on a nice diagonal, and the pawns aren't doubled, um, which, had he played a6 earlier in the game, like, straight away, I would have taken, and doubled the pawns, right? But now, in this position, he can take with the bishop, so I don't want to do that. So I retreat. Knight b4, just pressuring the pawn and potentially preparing ideas of b5. Now the bishop is monitoring the square. So I just drop back to b3, guarding my pawn, guarding my pawn, bishop safe, b5 still can't be played. He goes bishop c6, I go knight to e2, just preparing c3 to kick the knight out. a5, which it's a mistake. I was expecting d5. But when you're playing against lower rated players, they can not want to do anything too committal a lot of the time because they kind of trust that you've calculated much more than they have. And so you can get away with playing a little bit worse to go for a sharper position sometimes. So he plays a5, c3, kick the knight out. I go bishop c2 which the computer doesn't like, but it's like a Roy Lopez type structure or like an Italian structure where I've got the pawns on c3, d3, e4, but I've got the addition of f4. So I can go for f5 or e5 and I want to open this diagonal at some point, potentially. Queen d7. 
knight g3. I'm just looking at this f5 square, and the queen coming here also helps to monitor f5. So g plays g6 again, keeping an eye on f5. Queen e2, just getting some more development in. I'm also like trying to overprotect this e4 pawn so I can play d4 potentially in the future or support e5. And in my opponent plays h6 and it is a bad move because now I can play f5 and the pawns hang in, right? And obviously I'm pressuring the important pawns in his position that are protecting his king. So he takes, I take on h6 first with an attack on the rook. So he's got to move the rook, rook e8. And then I take on f5, so I'm up a pawn now. And he can take the pawn back, but this pawn structure is horrible. All I've got to do is get, somehow get my queen to somewhere like g5 or g7, and it's game over. Also, this pawn is going to be lost anyway, because my knight is pressuring it. My rook, after d4, the bishop's going to be pressuring it. He can't do this. So he plays bishop f8. And his idea is to open up the discovery on the queen and attack my bishop. And there's only one move for white here. It's pretty obvious. Queen d2, protecting the bishop and getting out of the attack. Knight g4 is played, which he's, he's looking at the e3 square after the bishops get traded off to just put a bit of pressure on my position. And it's a good try despite what the computer will tell you. It's it's a quite a logical thing because he's got to do something at this point. So I take, take, and here I'm like, I'm up a pawn. I'm winning. All I have to do is calculate. So I've just got to make sure my opponent can't get any real counterplay on my position. And I just got to convert a winning position. You know, it's plus five. So I take here first, and my opponent can't take because of knight e5 check, with discovery on the king, queen's under attack. So he doesn't take the pawn. He brings the knight into e3, which pressures the rook, pressures the bishop. And I take on f7 first, because it comes with an attack on the rook. And so if knight takes here, I first take the rook with check, and then I take the knight, and then I'm just up a piece and two pawns. So after g takes f7, his rook is attacked, so he goes, plays rook e7. Also, he can't take with the queen here because of knight g5, where the queen's under attack by the knight and the rook, and it's pinned to the king. And if knight takes f1, rook takes f1, and the rook is defended by the knight, and there's no sort of back rank stuff because my queen controls the e1 square anyway. So that's just GG. So rookie three is played. He can't take the pawn with anything basically. I play knight e4, cutting off the connection of the rook to the knight and saying, look, you've got to take me. And here I was looking at knight takes f1, queen h6 check, the king can't move except to take the pawn. And then knight g5 with a check. The king can go to g8 or e8. And if he goes to e8, then queen h8 is mate because the knight covers this square. And on king to g8, then knight f6 comes with checkmate with a fork on the king and the queen. This knight covers here, the queen covers these squares, and obviously down the h-file. So it's a really nice uh, combination of the knight and the queen. So he, he, he can't um, take the rook, because my queen then can use the diagonal. So, whoops. So yeah, he, he can't take the rook because it opens up the diagonal for my queen. So he takes the knight with his rook. This is a bit of a desperation move, but I've still got to be accurate because I can't give him anything. You know, this diagonal might 
potentially get weak um, once pieces start to clear off their squares. So I just take it, he takes my rook, I take back, and in this position I'm at three pawns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, versus one, two, three, four. We can all do simple maths, right? We've all got fingers on our hands to do this with. But more importantly, the position's completely crushing. Like, his king has no protection, his rook isn't in the game, his knight has spent the whole game on a6, just shut off from the rest of the board. Because this pawn's controlling it, he can't go to c5, he can go to c7, and, and, and then what, right? So that's one of the reasons why a5 was such a bad move earlier in in this position. a5 just meant that I can kick the knight to the edge of the board and it spends the whole of the rest of the game sitting there. So he takes on f7. I've got no useful discoveries. My knight can't move to defend my rook because the queen and the pawn are in the way and the rook's undefended. So a knight move here just hangs mate in one. So it, it's not over, but I'm not going to I'm not going to blunder this. Queen takes d6 check. King e8. And here I was really happy with the way that I convert this because I give him nothing. I play e5 and I spoke to my opponent after the game. He saw e5 and he was like what on earth is that for? The reason I play e5 is because my knight can go to d2 to protect my rook and get it into the game, but I'd like to get a knockout blow as quick as possible, right? What e5 does is it opens up the bishop, right? My bishop has been stuck behind this pawn and the pawn that was previous on d3, but now it's liberated and the king has no legal moves and it's sitting on a light square. Rook d8. And instead of panicking here and moving the queen, I just play bishop to g6, pinning the queen to the king. If queen takes, then queen takes, and I'm up a queen. So my opponent plays rook takes d6. And then you have to give this first, because it comes with a check. And if you take here, then you lose. <laughs> so you just got to be a little bit accurate. The bishop takes f7 check. King takes, pawn takes rook, and in this position my opponent resigns because I'm up in exchange and three pawns, one of them's two squares from promotion. These pawns are going to promote very easily. It's game over. And his knight spent the whole game on a6, right? He, he's just he's just playing down a piece. He's just played down a, pe down a piece. And, you know... So the understanding that you get when you improve at chess makes you realize how important your piece activity is. And this is one of them, you know, if his knight was able to go to c6, for example, let's say this happens, he's okay. Because when this king side attack comes in and the bishop ends up on f8, the knight can come to e7, and the squares that I was exploiting previously on g6 and f5, the knight can help to protect. With the knight all the way on a6, it can't do anything, and I just have more pieces participating in the game. So, yeah, kind of just like keeping as many pieces on the board as possible, um, especially in the opening, like nothing has been traded until... Until move 17 was the first trade. It gives my opponent more to think about. And because I'm the higher rated player, I should be able to, like, conceptualize more things at once. And be able to think at a faster rate than my opponent. Because I've got more experience in the game than he does. But, you know, from, from this position, it's... it's kind of simple to convert this. I just have to block off any of my opponent's counterplay, force some of the pieces off the board once I'm up material, and then just a nice little 
like complete um, toning down of the position, just get the queens off the board, and he has nothing once that happens, and so he resigns. So, hope you guys enjoyed, hope you learned something, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, obviously, and um, have a good one.